Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to look at resources and comparing them to dictionaries. Now, if you don't know what a dictionary is, I'll briefly explain it in a little bit, but I would suggest um, watching some other videos on what a dictionary is. If you don't know what it is at all, um, definitely go look into what a dictionary is because we're actually going to be comparing a dictionary to a resource. All right. So the first thing we have to um, see is my setup. So in my setup here, um, we see that I have a world node with a script attached. There's nothing in here, just a node 2D. And I also have a script called item.gd. Now there is nothing in this, including the extend. I have absolutely no code in here. And lastly, I also have a resource. Now, how do we create a resource? You can just right click um, on the folder. If we hit, uh, hit create new, we can go to resource and you can just create in resource and name it, right? Create whatever, name it. And that is how you do it. So what is a resource? So I'm going to say this now, a resource is, is basically a dictionary. It's something that holds data. Now you can actually compare it to a regular variable as well. So we kind of want to understand a variable first. What is a variable? A variable is something that contains an, uh, information or data, right? So if I want to contain a number, right? Um, let's say, yeah, actually, no, actually what we'll do is we'll say, um, health, right? So if I want to contain the um, number, let's say not zero, probably, right? Let's say 10 into a variable, I would call it health, right? So we can print health and say print health, and that will print us 10 when I play the game, right? And I can adjust this variable um, depending on what I want to do, right? So I can uh, subtract to it. I can say uh, health minus equals one, and that will give me nine, right? So if I get hit, I can subtract to it, whatever. Now, a resource or similarly a dictionary is the same thing, but it just holds several types of data. So a dictionary would hold data depending on the key. So we can have a key zero, for example, or actually we'll put the number zero. And then we can put, um, actually, no, what we'll do is we'll do the same thing. So we'll have, uh, sorry about this, we'll have health. And then we'll put the number 10 and then we can also have mana. So now we have two types of data or uh, not two types, but, but two, two numbers of data, right? So we have health and mana, we can say five, right? And now if I want to call health in my dictionary, we'll have to actually rename this to dic, say dictionary. What I can do is I can just say dic at health, health like this, and that will allow me to call this number of health, like this number, right? So now when I print this, it will print me the same thing, but I'm just accessing the type of data or the data itself differently. Now, this is really useful because now I can store many types of things into one area, right? So I can say, let's say instead of dictionary, I want to create an item, an item one, right? So, or just item, right? So um, we'll say this item has these stats, that we want to give it, and this will give the, the player stats, right? So whatever you want to say or whatever, right? Um, however, what is a, a, a resource? Well, a resource is essentially the same thing. It's, it's literally the same thing. However, it's just easier for Godot and it, it how do I put this? Uh, it has uh, the right side of our screen, so it's more user-friendly. So first we want to extend resource. And then what we'll do is we'll give it a class name, class name, and we'll say item. And then what we can do is we can export a bunch of variables. Now, this is basically the same thing as giving it a um, key or a data. So we put a variable inside of here and we are able to basically put something into this. Now we can do this, we can put an icon and we can give it a specific texture by saying texture 2D. You can also do 3D, I believe, or just texture, but I'm gonna do 2D because I generally work in 2D. Now, if I want a uh, variables, we can say this, or sorry, if we want numbers or integers, right? We can say variable health and then give it a um, number, right? So, or we can do int, think int like this, right? And that would uh, default it to Actually, let's see what it defaults it to. Um, oh, I have to close that. And it defaults it to zero, right? So um, if I did this for all of these, um, it would do the same thing. And now it doesn't go to that number. If I save it, 
it will default back to zero. And we can see here in the icon, I can load it and put an icon into it, which is pretty useful. Now this is actually the same idea as preloading something. So you could have a variable icon and then equal preload and then preload some sort of PNG. And that does pretty much the same thing. Now, if I save this, you won't see it in the um, resource file or resource extender here, um, mainly because we didn't export it, <laughs> right? So we have to export it and say uh, variable. And now we see the icon, okay? So to, sum to summarize, a dictionary, sorry, a resource is essentially a type of thing in Godot that is a uh, that holds data for us. Okay, so let's take a app look at an application in our game that we can do, or in our uh, thing here. So first, we need to load the um, the actual thing that we created. Right, so the uh, resource, and we can do that by calling item or item one or whatever you want to call it, and then call the class, which is item, which we don't actually have to, but um, since we already created the class name, we can. Um, and then we'll equal to preload and load the actual uh, resource that we made. Now, in our ready function, what we can do is we can print the item one dot health, and that will print us or get access to that item's health. So now when I play, it will say health is equal to zero. Now I can also adjust it, right, by saying item health equals 10, right? So play and it should give me 10. Now, another thing that's pretty cool or neat is we can create an object depending on the icon, right? So generally speaking, when I wanna play a game and I have an inventory and whatever, I have an item and I wanna create an object depending on the data from this resource. Now I can do that by doing this. So this will allow us to create a sprite. So I'm just basically creating a sprite in code. So it's almost the same as if I'm actually doing this and I'm just creating a sprite, but I'm creating this sprite using code. So I've created a sprite it's called new to create an object. And then I'm gonna take that sprite node, I'm gonna get the access to the texture, and then I'm gonna give it the icon from our item, right? And then I'm gonna add child. Now. I want you to guess actually, before I play, what is it gonna give me? It's gonna give me nothing. Nothing will change. It won't error, but nothing like, you don't see anything. Now let's take a look at our remote on the top left. Now if we go in here, we can actually see that our sprite has been created. However, the texture is empty. Why? Well, because our texture in our icon is empty, right? So if we go over here, we see that we didn't actually preload anything, but the useful part is if I go into my item, I can actually um, go over here and let's say we wanna give it this icon or this uh, texture, I can do that, right? So now I have this texture. And now when I get I play, now I have this texture on the top left. Now, the useful part of this is I can create one script. I can have this general script of things that I want. And then I have one item, like item one. And then if I duplicate, not the script, sorry, if I duplicate the resource and say item two, like let's say um, iron sword, right? Instead, I have an iron sword and then a bronze sword or something, right? In my iron sword, I will want different stats. I would want maybe 10 health, 20 mana, and 30, 300 strength or something, right? And a different, um, let's just give it a random icon texture. And that would allow me to access a different uh, item or a different, you know, well, item, a different resource, right? So now what I can do is I can change this to that new resource that I made. And now that will give me this different icon that I've made and the health um, is 10. So let's actually, first of all, let's remove this piece of code and then it should still give me 10. So yeah, because I've set it to 10, but just for the sake of um, the example one more time, We've changed it to 2,222. Yeah, so that's basically it. Now, the question is, when do we use a resource versus a dictionary? Well, you would use a resource versus a dictionary generally for usability. Um, now, the general idea or rule of thumb, I would say, is when you have a lot of information or data that you want to store inside of something, generally you would put it inside of a resource instead. Um, or that's kind of the best practice inside of Godot. That's what a lot of people do, mainly just because it's easier, um, it saves time and et 
et cetera, et cetera, right? So it saves time. It's easier to see on the right side of the screen, easier to adjust the values, right? Um, and that's pretty much it. I think I'm missing one more thing. Nope, I think that is it. Um, so a resource is basically a, uh, a dictionary almost. It just contains data and we can access it through code just like we do a dictionary and we can play around with it just like a, a dictionary. Now, um, the class name doesn't actually matter. So uh, the class name, here, I gotta delete that too. <laughs> a class name actually allows it to create an object. Now an object is a bit different from a resource. And if you're curious about objects, subscribe to my channel and I will explain um, or create a video and let me know down in the uh, description or down in the comments down below if you guys would actually like to see that um, and you would like to see a video on uh, objects versus resources or how to create objects inside of Godot, uh, you know, explanations of ob object oriented programming, those kind of things. So um, I'll see you guys next time and I hope you can sub to my channel and I hope you like this video and I will see you guys next time.